Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam is one of India's premier top ranked universities which focuses on transforming lives through learning, research and innovation. The university was established 19 years ago in the year 2003 and has made significant achievements in a short time. Education for life, education for living. Amrita University is guided by the thoughtfulness of our Chancellor, Amma, who laid down the philosophy of education for life by placing equal stress on education for a living. It is this vision that led to the establishment of a vast network of educational institutions that provide modern education while imparting the traditional values. While the pursuit of academic excellence forms the core of Amrita's success, it also undertakes the responsibility to shape the whole character of youngsters with love, care and compassion. The university is headquartered at the foothills of the Western Ghats in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu and has five other campuses spread across South India in Amrithapuri, Kerala, Kochi, Kerala, Bengaluru, Karnataka, Chennai, Tamil Nadu and Mysore, Karnataka. The university will soon launch its new campuses in Amravati, Andhra Pradesh, Faridabad, Delhi, NCR. Our inspiration, a renowned humanitarian leader and spiritual leader, Amba is the chancellor and guiding light of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam. Amma's concept of education, stress on research and commitment to instilling universal values have come together to shape Amrita into an institution where the latest achievements and discoveries combined with compassion and service-mindedness. As Amma said in 2010, when the State University of New York presented her with an honorary doctorate in Humane Letters. Rankings The multi-campus, multidisciplinary research establishment is ranked as fifth best university in India 2021 by National Institutional Ranking Framework, NIRF. We have also been accorded the status of Institute of Eminence, IOE, by the Ministry of Education, Government of India. A testament to our pursuit of excellence is the NAC A++ accreditation score, the highest possible. NAC accreditation measures universities for excellence in curricular aspects, teaching, learning and evaluation, research, innovations and extension, infrastructure and learning resources, student support and progression, governance, leadership and management, institutional values and best practices, global impact and international collaborations. Among the private educational institutions in the country, Amrita has entered into MOUs and collaborations with more than 450 leading universities around the globe. Students also benefit from our relations with industries and interactions with top management of multinational companies. These collaborations facilitate student exchange programs, student visits, industrial training and project guidance under reputed corporate entities. Placements Placements at Amrita have always been best in class with students usually having more than one job offer. Some students have up to three job offers by the end of their course from reputed MNCs, be it engineering, management, life sciences, arts or sciences. Amrita is a place where the world's best companies look for talent. More than 200 companies visit the campus every year and the average salary offered to our students is 5.8 lakh per annum. Meanwhile, the highest package offered is 56.95 lakh per annum and the highest stipend for internship is rupees 80,000 per month. Amrita's Technology Business Incubator, TBI, 
is a non-profit supported by the government of India that funds, mentors and nurtures ideas by startups and entrepreneurs. It focuses on developing innovations in the areas of information technology, cyber security, networking, social media and more. The TPI startups have obtained multiple awards and recognition both from India and across the globe. Till date, TBI has incubated more than 75 startups and mentored 216 startup ideas with 0% loss from investments. It funds up to 1 crore rupees per startup and has opened up many more funding options through its partnership with venture capital firms and angel investor networks. Amrita TBI is one of the only six incubators selected to be world-class under Nidhi Ayok's Atal Innovation Mission. Campus Life A home away from home. At Amrita, we believe in a holistic approach towards our students' development. To augment students' classroom learning, all campuses provide students with digital and central libraries quiet study centers, seminar halls, e-learning studios, computer labs, and campus-wide free Wi-Fi. The university encourages both indoor and outdoor sports and games, and there are world-class swimming pools, gymnasiums, stadiums, and games arenas. Various clubs cater to the artistic and scientific minds of the students. If you look around all of Amrita's campuses, you will see the prevailing educational environment is in communion with nature. The sand, the seas and the sky define the backdrop of these temples of learning. It vibrates with an energy of togetherness and encourages us to live in harmony with everything around us, including a unity within ourselves. This setting is suited to instill both learners and the learned with the courage and wisdom to face the challenges of life. The campus at Etimani is considered India's most picturesque. It is like an oasis in a desert. What started out as a barren landscape underwent a miraculous transformation through the university's tree planting project. Today, there are more than one lakh trees growing there, the most extensive collection in number and species on a university campus in South India. The Live in Labs program originated from Amma's idea to bridge the rural and urban divide by sending university students to remote villages in India to understand the everyday difficulties faced by people living there. The program is designed to be a multidisciplinary real-life learning experience offered to both international participants and Amrita University's faculty and students. The lab's objective is to expose youths to day-to-day -day problems faced in rural communities with a two-week to six-month periods of live-in internships in Indian villages. It also aims to inspire them to dedicate the knowledge and skills they acquired at university to help develop practical, cost-effective solutions to the challenges faced by the villages. Researchers at Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam partner with senior scientists at world's leading research universities to innovate new ideas and invent new products applying existing technology towards solving some of the world's most pressing problems from disaster management to assuring access to education and the management and cure of diseases. This effort reflects in Amrita's national and international research rankings.
India's first UNESCO Chair on Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality. Empowerment through innovation and technology. The Center for Women Empowerment and Gender Equality is a research-focused academic center for promoting gender equality and fostering women's empowerment with a special focus on using technology and other innovative methods. This center will offer diverse courses in key focus areas, pilot radical ideas, and collaborate with leading universities and institutions. The Amala Bharatam Campaign ABC Clean India Campaign was a program pioneered by Amrita, aimed at improving public health and restoring India's physical beauty. The project was launched in 2010 during Amma's 57th birthday celebrations and through this campaign, volunteers undertake periodic cleaning of roads, markets, temples, government offices and hospitals. As a part of this campaign, garbage was sorted and either recycled or properly disposed of. Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam, along with Kerala's prisons and correctional services and Tamil Nadu Prison Department initiated Amrita Yoga classes and IAM Technic meditation sessions in 2018 to address and transform the physical, mental and emotional health of prison inmates. Our goal is to teach yoga and meditation techniques to help the prison inmates become more self-aware. They learn to breathe with awareness and manage emotions through these exercises. Ours is a changing world. It needs people who can adapt to change with minds that can expand and include change and yet hold human friendly values that can withstand all changes which is why the world needs education that shapes the minds of these people and which is why the world needs Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam. Education for life, education for living A university where future is driven by imagination. Experiential learning creates diverse opportunities. Where industry exposure and international partnerships help you sail. Come, start your journey towards success with Amrita University. There's a place where the best minds come together, work together, work to end inequalities, work towards transforming lives. This is a place recognized as one of the world's best universities. This is Amrita, now ranked among the top 100 universities in the world and ranked number one in India. Amrita University. There's a reason why we pick up the highest grades nationally and internationally, year after year after year. That reason is you. Now, with an A++ accreditation from NAC and consistent rankings among the top universities in NIRF, Amrita, we get recognized because you must. Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam is one of India's premier top-ranked universities which focuses on transforming lives through learning, research and innovation. The university was established 19 years ago in the year 2003 and has made significant achievements in a short time. Education for life, education for living. Amrita University is guided by the thoughtfulness of our Chancellor, Amma. Who... A warm good evening all. Welcome to the day one of Engineering Foundation Program. Engineering Foundation Program opens up a window into the world of technology. It is designed to give a brief introduction on how the world is utilizing basic area of science and mathematics to make the human life easier. This program facilitates the transition of plus two to the engineering stream as seamless as possible. Engineering Foundation program is a five-day continuous workshop and at the end of every session you can clarify any queries regarding this topic. On the final day, 
students will get an opportunity to interact with our alumni, Jodi Vaidinathan. Along with that, we are conducting a quiz program on the basis of this workshop topic. And all the winners, those three winners will be awarded with exciting prizes. Today we are having Ms. Lakshmi, who is the Assistant Manager, Career Counseling, Directorate of Admissions and Academic Outreach, Amrita Vishwavidya Peter. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Ms. Lakshmi to deliver this session. Over to you, Lakshmi. Thank you, Pavati ma'am, for the wonderful introduction. So I hope my audio video, everything is fine. Yes, yes I'm able yes. to view your chat box also. So if it's fine to go, if it's good to go, you can give it a thumbs up. So I have seen the session soon. Uh, Ma'am, is everything fine and is everything good to go? Uh, I, yes, uh, but your, yeah, now it's fine, ma'am. Okay, uh, the slides are visible, right? Yes. Yes, yes I yes. think some students have uh, typed thumbs up in the chat box, really good. So uh, I wish the session is interactive. So yeah, we'll start today. So hi all, and I wish a very happy and wonderful evening to everybody here, all the engineering aspirants or the future engineers here. So I'm really happy to see this round of students here. So I wish to start the session by giving you an idea of why I have such a program, something like an engineering foundation program, or why you need a foundation program like this. So I think this question was there in everyone. Even when I was a kid, when I was in my school days, maybe my 10th, 11th, or 12th, I was also having this question. It's an age and also, am I ever going to use this in my real life? Why am I studying all these things? I don't know where I use this in my real life. When am I ever going to use this? Maybe when your teacher was teaching you integration, maybe differentiation, uh, maybe something related to the electromagnetic waves, uh, something like the electricity and magnetism. So when they were teaching all these concepts, when we were studying the algebra, the linear program, we never thought uh, the thing useful for us, or it was like something like, I studied this thing, I'll get good marks, then I'll crack some entrance exam or something, then I'll join some university. So is this something you have thought or have you ever thought, why are we studying all these things? Is there any need of studying these things? So I would say, what are topics we are when it comes to our mathematics? We are using them in our day-to-day -day life. Maybe in every, everywhere around us, in every aspect, when it comes to something related to science or when it comes to something related to technology. So somebody has I think my voice is breaking. I hope I'm fine now. Yes. Okay, thank you. We all are engineers in one way or the other. I used to call every individual or every human being as engineers. Your body is the engine and your mind is the engine. I would like to say that uh, we all used to do different tasks in our day-to-day -day life, right? Uh, something, uh, maybe some different works in our home. So during that time, we are using our skills. Or maybe what we have experienced, maybe something, uh, something that we have experienced to do a particular task. So that's everybody is becoming an engineer. So what are skills we have? We are upgrading it or we are improving it to the next level. So engineering is a course which can take up these skills or which can improve or upgrade these skills to the next level. That's what the peculiarity of the course of the course like engineering us. So everybody is an engineer in every aspect. So do engineer your life in everything that you come across. Here are the objectives of this program. So we'll help you to make your translate as to engineering uh, from uh, the UG as seamless as possible. And we'll give you some real world applications of science and mathematics. So this is the course part of the program. So we have a five day workshop. 
in the, in the initial four days, we'll teach you the subjects. And then in the final day, we'll have a meet with the alumni where you can discuss about your career, maybe about what all things you want to achieve, about your doubts related to engineering. And in the final day, we'll have a quest. So this is the core structure. And I hope all of you have received about why we are here with this program. So Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Can I uh, continue? Yeah, you just uh, share your screen. Okay. I'm so sorry for some issues that have happened. I hope my screen is visible. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so sorry for the disturbance that has happened. So I think we'll start again. So this is the course structure. So for an engineer, um, so those students who wish to be engineers, try to relate everything that you come across in your daily life with technology. That's really important because we everything now is related to technology. We try to relate everything with technology. What are you coming across in your life? Can anybody type in the chat box if it's completely fine? Yes, I could see soon. Uh, yes, I think it's audible now. Oh, thank you. So I would like to wind up this introduction part by referring to Sir Arthur C. Clarke's quote. So any sufficiently advanced technology is equivalent to magic. So who is he? It's none other than Elon Musk. We all know, right? We all know all the details related to him. We all, when we hear his name, we know something like, we'll think about Tesla, maybe Space Link, about all the other things that have been invented, maybe about the Hyperloop, different things. So according to him, engineering is the closest thing to magic that exists in the world. There may be some students are in the same who are not really good at mathematics or maybe not uh, that much interested in mathematics. I would say I am also a person who is not that much good in mathematics during my school, maybe my degree or maybe my PG time. I just thought I want to pass the subject. That's all from my side. That was my mentality there. But the point is that every individual or every person has to have a good base in mathematics to excel in AI. I think you all know that science and mathematics was used to describe the world or nature around us. So once you have an idea about how important the mathematics is, you'll by default start falling in love with the mathematics and you'll start uh, understanding all the concepts. So without further delay, we'll start the session, first day session. So today we'll be discussing, we'll start with the mathematics topic and our topic is linear programming. So can anybody type in the chat box, what is linear programming? I know in the school, in 11th and 12th, you have studied linear programming. You have used uh, different. Um... Uh, maybe something like you have used to solve this program. Um, your voice is breaking very frequently. Are 
Lakshmi, are you there? Yes, sir. Please hold on for a minute. I don't know what yeah, has yeah. happened. I think your net connection is not good today. That's all. Sir, is the screen visible right now? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. definition of linear programming what what do you think what is the concept of linear programming or what it can be yes manya joshi have typed converting a daily situation into a mathematical proof And guys, please be there. Uh, she's coming in another two or three minutes. I think uh, her network is not good today. So please be with I'm extremely sorry, students. This is because of some issue I'm facing here. I'm I'm really sorry from my side. I hope it's uh, visible. So we'll start with the definition of linear programming. It's one of the simplest way to perform optimization. So a lot of students have typed the uh, answers of what's the definition of linear programming. It's something like mapping uh, your daily life problems uh, using the mathematics, or it's something called a mathematical modeling or converting of daily life situations into mathematical equations. I have seen a lot of definitions and I'm really happy that you have understood the concept of what is linear programming. Now I would say in simpler terms, we can call the linear programming as the method to find out how to do something in the best possible way. It's another term called uh, for the word called optimization. How to do something in the best possible way. I would give you a small example. Maybe uh, in in, the, in your class, you're having a big chocolate bar and you'll share it with your friends, right? So it, it's also something related to the mathematics. It's also something where we are using the concept of optimization, where I want to share the chocolate bar to everybody in, the, in such a way that maybe everybody gets an equal amount or maybe in whatever way you wish to distribute it. So this is the simplest example. But when you think of uh, it in the mathematical way, something like of when it comes to uh, something related to the inventory or something related to the warehousing concept, 
to when it comes to mechanical engineering so during these times it's 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 just changing into something of a more complex part so the thing is that when you're having limited resources uh, maybe you have a need i need to maximize the profit i need to minimize the cost i need to minimize the time so all these can be different perspectives in which you have to do the optimum utilization of resources i i think everything is fine can anybody type in the chat box if everything is fine yes thank you so much now i think we'll move on to the next part so when it comes to linear programming the concept of formulation is really important what does it mean by formulation formulation plays a very important part in something called linear programming formulation is the process in which you will convert a real world program into linear program you all are having different real world situations you will write this real world situations or processes into a linear program so there are two terms here the first term is linear and the second term is something called programming so when it comes to linear it's it's something like uh, you are having multiple variables so if you are making a change in one it can affect the other part also i would give you a simple example i'm i'm planning to invest more money so maybe my return will also increase so it's a direct relationship something called a linear the second part is something called programming for the linear programming so when it comes to programming it defines the process of selecting the best solution from various alternatives or from different parts the process of selecting the best solution so there are different methods to perform linear program you have an objective function it may be minimizing the pro uh, maximizing the profit minimizing the work lot of things can be the objective function then you will have some data you will have some set of rules or constraints and you will have some decision variables these are the components or the basic components of a linear program once a problem has been formulated once a real life situation has been converted into a linear program it's very easy to solve it you have solved linear program using graphs in your class using metrics now when it comes to uh, technology you have different computer programs you have r which is called as an open source uh, tool which is very popular among different data scientists so they are using this tools to perform different tasks essential data science tasks so you can use that another one is something called the open solvers you will have something called excel vba aiden it can also help you to solve this linear program now i think we'll move on and we will see the concept of linear programming in more detail solving a linear program is really easy hardest part is formulating the problem converting the real world situation into the problem an application of linear program is there in everywhere around you it can help you in your personal or maybe in your professional life i will give you some other examples also um it's something like you are using linear programming i am going to my work i'll i'll drive to my work so it's like i am leaving my home i am just driving i am reaching my work you want to find the shortest route it's an example of linear programming now another one i am working in a software firm maybe after 5 days i have a project delivery so i'm working as a team lead i have a project delivery after 5 days so how am i going to make all the team members of my team work together in such a way that i'll be able to deliver the project on time that's another example so linear program is really important in different aspects in our day to day life now i think we want i have very good examples for you when it comes to uh, linear programming so this is a very famous example it's called the knapsack problem or the traveling salesman problem so i have added some pictures so i i hope um, you can see the pictures and, and names that is also um, visible in the slides if yes please do type it's fine yes so i am a delivery person so my aim or my job is to deliver maybe some package or whatever the content is i my job is to deliver those things to the different destination so i am here a delivery person 
today I have six packages to deliver. I need to, I have a truck of mine. So I need to take these packages from the warehouse, which is located at the point A. So I have to go to the warehouse, which is located at the point A. I have to collect these six packages and I have to deliver it to different destinations. That's what I need to do. So as it is six packages, I need to deliver it to different locations. So here they have given me, you can see this diagram. I hope it's visible. So here A is the warehouse. You can see a truck here. So I have different locations in which I need to deliver the packet. So I have U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. These are the locations in which I need to deliver the packet. Now, all of you can see some arrow marks here and some numbers written in between. From A to U, it's 10. U to V, it's 10. From something like A to V, it's 15. From V to, sorry, X to V, it's 12. So you have a lot of numbers that are written here. So these numbers indicate the distance between the cities. So let's assume if I'm starting from A and if I need to deliver a packet to you, I have to travel 10 kilometers. So from U to W, it's 8 kilometers. So from A, if I'm starting, I have 18 kilometers to reach W. This is how you have to travel. So here comes the twist. So you have two criteria that you need to consider. So the first one is, you need to consider or you need to save the fuel. That's the first one. And the second one is you need to take the shortest route. So if there is, uh, if there are three or four routes to reach Y, I need to take the shortest route. So I need to save the fuel. So if you are taking the shortest route, the fuel, it will automatically happen, right? And I need to deliver all these uh, packets on time. So this is the question or this is the condition. This is the real life situation that you are having. Now we need to understand how I will be able to solve this. Now we will be able to understand. We will discuss on how we will be solving this. I hope the question is clear. Yes, I think Shravan have typed A to U to W to Y to Z to V. Okay. So let's see how we will use this optimization concept to solve this problem. Here. What I'm using is, I'm using the technique of linear programming in which I'll be able to find out the shortest route. So the process of choosing the best route here is called as operations research. So how many of you have already come across the concept of traveling salesman's problem that I've mentioned here? The example that we just saw, the knapsack or the traveling salesman's problem. Are there any students who have encountered this thing? Uh, maybe when you are studying linear programming in mathematics, I hope uh, no one have typed in the chat box. It's completely fine. So the process of choosing the shortest route or the best route. Okay. It's completely fine. So the process of choosing the shortest route or the best route is done by linear program. And we have some concept called operations research. Yes, somebody have tried, uh, typed, I think, Pranit. Uh, okay, Surin. A lot of students have typed. I have uh, come across this pro problem. Yes. It's really good that you have reached to some application level. Now I'll tell you what is operations research. Operations research is a technique in which it will help you to take decision or it will help you to solve the problem. That's the importance of operations research. So I'll tell you a story. So during the World War time, I would say the British uh, military agencies, so the war have started maybe after some months they were having very less amount of resources. Uh, maybe something like their weapons, maybe their medicines and all the things, their food, everything was very less. So during that time, the military head have assigned a committee of five or six members and asked them to distribute whatever is remaining to all the people in a uh, maybe a good manner. I would I would just use the term in a good manner. So the chief have appointed a team member, set of team members, maybe six or seven, and their aim is to allocate these resources to everybody. So during the initial stage, this concept was called as military operations. And after some time, it was renamed as the operations research or the concept of operations research. It's a part of linear program and it's being used in all the areas around us in education sector, in airline, in agriculture, everywhere, in transportation, in planning, in mechanical, or in manufacturing industry, everywhere. 
I would give you another example. I I hope all of you have uh, used the Uber service, right? All of you have come across the Uber. Maybe you have traveled. So when you're booking, what is happening in the background? Have you ever thought what's happening? So the Uber is having a master routing plan. A master routing plan. What, what it can be? When you're booking it and it's, it's your route, how they will send the driver? How much is the cost? So how they deal with all these things? So they will have a routing plan in which with the master routing plan or after analyzing the master routing plan only, they will decide. Yeah, we will send a nearby driver and this will be the charge and this will be the other constraints. So everywhere there are some constraints or restrictions and making the best out of it. Yes, the nearest driver, it's completely, uh, I, I too completely agree with it, Pranit. So this is something called a uh, concept of operation research. I would say different companies are having a post called operations research analyst. Have you ever heard of uh, some company which is having a post called operations research analyst? He develops and uses the mathematical models and he'll take some decisions in the company. So here, our aim is to identify the problem. So once I identify the problem, I'll come up with different solutions or different models. Then what we'll do? We'll test the different solutions and we'll find out which one is the best and we'll use it. So now, Vishri, I, 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 I have seen your question, so I'll get back to you maybe towards the end of the session. We can have a discussion about what, what are things that are there in your mind. Okay. Now, I think I have another very pretty example for you. So this is an example. So I'm working in a chocolate manufacturing company. So I need to manufacture chocolate. So my company is manufacturing two categories of chocolates. The first one is chocolate A and the second one is chocolate B. Okay. Now, I know the ingredients that are required for making the chocolate or to, for creating the chocolates A and B are milk and choco. So here, I'm, I'm having a chocolate manufacturing company. I need to manufacture two types of chocolate, chocolate A and chocolate B. And I know the ingredients are milk and choco. Now, I would give you the units of milk and choco that is needed to manufacture chocolate A and B. So, each unit of A requires one unit of milk and three units of choco. So, for chocolate A, I need one unit of milk and three units of choco. For chocolate B, I need one unit of milk and two units of choco. So I know my aim. I know what all is needed. Now I have my company kitchen and I need to check on what's the stock there. So in my company kitchen, I have five units of milk and 12 units of choco. Now I think you have received an idea what we are going to do. So as I'm a company owner, I need to think about the profit perspective, right? So when I'm selling chocolate A, I'll have rupees 6 as profit per unit A sold. And similarly, rupees 5 per unit B sold. Now the question of my real life situation is, I want to maximize the profit. So I'm, 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 I'm asking you, how many units of A and B should be produced respectively? My aim is to maximize the profit. I just want to have an understanding or I am asking you this question. How many units of A and B should it produce? So I have just reassigned the question so that it will be easy for us to understand or to come to a conclusion. So one, when we are analyzing the current situation, for chocolate A, I need one unit of milk, three units of choco. The profit is six per unit, six rupees per unit. So when it comes to chocolate B, I have one unit of milk, two units of choco, and the profit is rupees five per unit. And in my kitchen, I have five units of milk and 12 units of choco. My aim is to maximize profit. Now I am I'm going to the mathematical part of this. So I'm, I'm just going to convert everything into XYZ format. That is really important. That's really important uh, part of the algebra. So the total number of units by A, I'm calling it as X. 
and the total number of units by b i'm calling it as y and i'm just assigning the total profit as z so the total number of units of a is x total number of units by b is y and the total profit i'm just assigning it as z somebody have typed x plus y yes i think venkata so has have typed x plus y equal to 6 and x plus y equal to 5 let's see my aim is to make maximum profit so the total profit that the company makes what will be the combination it's the total units of a and b produced multiplied by their unit price right so i'm just writing z is equal to 6x plus 5y i want to maximize the set i want to maximize the profit so i have just wrote this as x sorry z is equal to that is the maximum profit z is equal to 6x plus 5y now there is one twist i need to think about the raw materials that is needed and the raw materials are available in the kitchen so two things need to be considered so each unit of a and b when it comes to milk they need only one unit of milk so how i'll be able to write it x plus y is less than or equal to 5 because 5 is the total yes yeah, somebody have typed b will give more profit let's see now when it comes to choco it's 3 for 3 units for a and 2 units for b and the total amount is 12 so what the equation will be 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 12 now what we have done i told you a story it was something of a real life situation we have converted into the mathematical format now when i want to solve this question i want all the inequalities or all the equations that we have framed or formed to be satisfied this is how linear programming plays its role so the first one is z is equal to 6x plus y sorry 6x plus 5y it's this profit then when it comes to milk it is x plus y is less than or equal to 5 and the second one is when it comes to choco it's 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 12 i have a video so the video was showing the same concept of that chocolate manufacturing that we have mentioned and i could see shravan uh uh i think govan some of the students have typed the answers so we'll keep it aside and maybe we'll discuss this answer maybe in any of the coming sessions any of the upcoming sessions
and somebody have even reframed the question and it's like one unit of A and four units of B can give you the maximum profit. A lot of students have typed the values also, X equal to two, Y equal to three, Z equal to 27. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see some of the students who are answering this in the chat box. It's really good. So I think we'll quickly move on to the next part of today's session. It's something called the application. Have you ever thought of linear programming being used in agriculture? Maybe in the transportation sector, in manufacturing industry, or in energy. Today, we'll see in which area linear programming plays a very important role in all these four sectors. So we'll be discussing more sectors also. So we'll start with these four. So Leo, don't worry if you're not able to uh, answer that simple math question. It's uh, that math question. It's completely fine. So we'll discuss about it in the coming session. So moving on to the application. So the first application is something related to food and agriculture. So the linear programming can help farmers in planning and making decisions, maybe which can help them to attain maximum uh, profit. Maybe which can help them in producing maximum crops. So this, uh, this concept of mathematics uh, can help them in taking a decision on which crop they should grow, about the quantity of it, maybe in the irrigation. So a model is there, something related to the linear programming, which can help these farmers in such a way that their revenue is increased. So we know technology is everywhere and we are depending upon it, right? It's only possible because of the background of science and mathematics that search. So we'll see which all areas linear programming is helping. So the first one is called a speed mix, then product transportation, land allocation, water irrigation, crop pattern, crop rotation. So these are the six fields where linear programming plays a very vital role in the field of food and agriculture. So we'll discuss about all of them. These problems are solved with the help of the linear program. So the first one is feed mix. How many of you know what is feed mix or what, what can be the feed mix problem? I would give you a, a simple example. When, when it comes to the farmers uh, or when it comes to livestock, uh, it's like we'll have to feed them, right? So there may be different foods according to season, according to areas. So in some seasons, this food will be very cheap. In some seasons, this food will be very cost. So for every individual, there is a basic energy need or nutritional requirement. So we can formulate or we can mix these feeds in such a way that at the minimum cost, we are able to satisfy all their energy and nutritional requirements. So where the linear programming plays a role. So because we are going to make up the combination, we have a aim. We have to satisfy the energy and the nutritional requirements. So that's what our aim will be there. And the second one is something called as optimizing the crop pattern. We know now uh, we have this population increase, the lands and all uh, the amount of land that we have for cultivation is very less, right? So which method to follow, which crop pattern to follow, which agricultural region, which crop? Yes, somebody have uh, typed, okay. A lot of students have typed the uh, about the feed mix in the chat box. It's really good. So when it comes to the crop pattern, optimizing the crop pattern. So which all crops or without irrigation or with the irrigation, which all crop pattern can give you better yield? Maybe how the production planning pattern for the food crops can be done. We want to maximize the profit of these farmers by taking up different crop combinations. Maybe something like we can depend upon natural fertilizers. Yes, uh, yes, somebody have typed it already. Maybe how to improve the soil fertility. So all this can be a part of it. Now moving on to crop rotation. How many of you have heard about something called crop rotation? I know you have studied this maybe in your lower classes. The crop rotation, about the crop rotation pattern. Yes, I think somebody have typed it in the chat box. If I'm having 10 acres of land, will I able to, uh, will I be able to split the different crops? Or will I be able to cultivate different crops in that land? 
maybe when it comes to weather or market different different things we have to consider yes somebody have typed i have studied it in eighth really good that you still remember it so if it's possible to uh, do this thing when the weather is this when the market rate is this or when the market situation is this so if i'm planning to miss all these things maybe if one crop is not going to get me a good yield the other can give me that's the importance of crop rotation or linear programming can help to help the farmers to identify which crop rotation pattern can give them an idea to uh, or which can let them reach the optimum goal or which can reach them a better profit it can help also be used to increase the productivity maybe the income of the farmers and also one point which is really important is use of the existing resources that is really important whatever we are doing we have to do the or we have to make the best out of what is available the optimum utilization of resources or the effective use of the existing resources now another part is something called land allocation something of similar sort that we have already told the division of land for different crops in such a way that i'll be able to improve the profit whether i'll be able to cultivate rice or pulses or maize what i'll cultivate maybe wheat what i'll have to cultivate so that my profit will be high now the next is something called irrigation you all know the different methods right drip irrigation or different types of irrigation whether it's canal irrigation so which method of irrigation is important as well as how we should perform this irrigation here also linear programming plays a very important role how to schedule the process of irrigation so i hope you have received an idea about how the linear programming is being um Using the concept of food and agriculture. Now we have one more point to discuss. It's in the dietary. I know you all are kids, but at least uh, it's like maybe of my age. Everybody in their life, maybe at least one day or the other, have thought about, yeah, I'll start dieting from tomorrow. We have that sentence, but every individual have thought about it. I'll start reducing my food intake. I'll die. I'll I'll do this thing. So there is something called linear programming, which is a very powerful tool. to aid in the planning of diet we needs i know all of you understood what the concept is here right because we have to have the minimum uh, something where we have to have the minimum nutritional requirements or the minimum energy requirements that we already mentioned so the linear programming helps to take a combination of foods if i want it as the cheapest part then it can be so in this season i have i'll receive lot of apples so maybe i can add it to my diet so maybe after some months it's costly so i'll replace it with something else that's possible it's it's just simple maths and it it can it's possible because of the concept of linear programming that's helping you now i think we'll quickly move on to the other part production management how many of you have heard about production management in the industry maybe some industry which is uh, producing different things maybe machines uh, maybe containers i hope you have heard about the production management right in the production management or in the production industry linear programming plays a very important role yes i think uh, prajwala have typed you have heard about it yes that's good so what can be product mix you can just guess from your side what can be product mix just any guess from your side these are the different areas in which the linear programming concept of the mathematics which we used to solve the problems feeling like it's it's very difficult which we used to draw these graphs which we used to find this is the area under and all those things right so they they see the range in which linear programming has its reach so if i'm a company owner or if i have a company my company will be producing different types of products right i'll be producing my company will be producing different products so how am i going to deal with these products how am i going to get the right combination i have a particular set of resources in my hand maybe something like the natural resources or what are resources i am having yes somebody have typed it as minimizing the cost and maximizing the profit planning and controlling the industrial process yes obviously how am i going to plan it or something like how am i going to determine the quantity of each product that my company is manufacturing maybe i want to make a contribution earlier somebody have typed don't go for manufacturing of chocolate eh? you can earn more profit or 
don't go for the manufacturing of chocolate b i think i guess go for a it can give you more profit it's not that way we have to have an optimal utilization of the resources in which we will be able to do everything maybe each goal or maybe each product now moving on the next one is something called production planning think about the minimum cost that is needed in my company to um, produce something the market will be different right the demands will be fluctuating a lot of things in the market will be fluctuating so i need to consider a lot of things maybe about the production capacity about the different constraints about the people in my company about the employees in my company yes somebody have type demand and supply obviously i have to consider this so during that time also production planning plays a very important role now another example is assembly line balancing how many of you know what is assembly line balancing that's a simple thing it is there in the term itself assembly line balancing so a lot of companies are there a lot of companies are there who are having uh, the parts from different parts and they'll do the uh, the components from they'll buy the components from different parts and they'll perform something called assembling you heard about it right i'm having a company which does this assembly so i'll i'll buy parts from yes managing assembly line i'll buy parts from different parts of the world i'll assemble them i'll create a product this is so common a lot of companies are doing it so when it comes to assembly line balancing when we are uh, assembling a product there will be a minimum delay that will happen or something like we'll call this as a lag time between the two assembling yes such as in cars and in manufacturing industry yes obviously yes even at the in our individual task i completely agree to it so during the assembly line balancing there is a small delay that's happening right in that also linear programming plays a very important role now another thing is something called the blending problems what can be blending what can be blending we are used to blend lot of things right so i I'll, i'll be able to manufacture a product from lot of raw materials yes i have different types of things i can blend them yes chemicals obviously i think venkata sohan have answered it this is being used in chemical industry a, a very good example where they do this blending it's it's being there in petroleum products also maybe in animal feeds maybe in our dietary uh, products also so there will be a combination of different things so during that combination or composition of different things we have to think whether it's minimum cost whether it's availability of raw materials or do i need to take care of something else here also there are some restrictions or some constraints that is happening yes medicine industry i'm i'm really happy that lot of students are already here with me in this session now the next important point is something called trim loss what can be trim loss uh we are doing lot of things in which we need to manufacture things uh different products uh into their standard size maybe i would give you one example maybe cutting of leather cutting of glass or maybe some some sheet and all maybe something related to metals and all so when we are doing this thing we need to focus on the minimum loss yes the minimum loss that's really important reduce the minimum amount of loss so in all these areas i would say linear programming has a very important role to play why because i'm working on certain uh, constraints or restrictions i have a goal to achieve so i need to take care of all these things and i would say i would not be able to proceed further without referring to the concept of linear programming now i think we'll move on to the other application that is transportation optimization i know we have discussed about it in really detail with the knapsack problem or the traveling salesman problem and i hope you have received an idea about it now moving on i would describe other sectors so when it comes to transportation optimization i wish to discuss one more point have you heard of supply centers have you heard of supply centers yes right it is there maybe in our uh, nearby locality maybe something like a warehouse that concept will be there 
So when it comes to transportation optimization, this also comes into picture. So I need to distribute a commodity in the best possible way. So there are different supply centers maybe nearby. Some of them will have maybe uh, 10,000 capacity. Some of them will have 50,000 capacity. Some of them will have 1 lakh capacity. So if somebody is in need of maybe uh, 10,000 and they are having 50,000 capacity, if possible, I'll be able to use the other facility of the remaining 40,000 so that I can do or perform this transportation optimization. So from the supply centers, uh, it's something like factories to the reception centers, uh, the locations in which it's getting stored. So here also, everybody has to consider this concept. Yes, Amazon delivery and all, it's obviously correct. So here also, we need to consider this distribution in such a way that we'll be able to reduce the cost. Now, why does this having this much importance? Why this transportation optimization is really high term? It's, it's being uh, given a lot more importance by different companies when it comes to Amazon, all the delivery companies and all. Why the, they are giving this much importance? I would say, why? Because any improvement in the transportation plan of the company have significant impact in the company's bottom line. That's what the uh, science behind us is. So how much improvement they were able to get in the transportation plan, the company will have a bottom line impact. It's something called a means of sustained cost savings. I have some research statistics to show before you. Research has shown that a 5% reduction in the transportation cost will have a similar impact of 30% increase in the sales. So it obviously comes to the profit part, right? Fast and efficient transportation and delivery is going to give me an extra edge for my company. So see the range. It's only the 5% reduction in the transportation cost see the increase that has happened in the sales. It's up to 30% increase in the sales. So that's what these things are getting hyped. It's, it's because of the importance that's uh, behind it. So I would say how much there is improvement in the transportation, it will lead to better service. It will lead to more shopping from the, or it's like more products will be sold from my company. Maybe the demand will also be increased. Now, another small example to all of you is something called the pilot scheduling or the routes. The aircrafts or all the transportation systems, whether it's bus or train or everywhere, they are depending upon something called the linear programming. To schedule their flights, maybe the depending upon the various routes, maybe you know, uh, to find out the crew of the flight, to determine or to schedule the crew of the flight, also linear programming plays a very important role. We know during some, re uh, some time, I would say uh, during some festive seasons and all, or maybe during the vacation time, the fare increases, right? So the airlines use this linear programming to optimize their profit according to the different seat prices and the customer demand. So it can also increase the efficiency and decreases the expense. Same with all the other means of transportation, whether it's bus or train. This is being used in the scheduling, maybe during the travel time and all. Now another sector, Yes, I could see some students of, uh, yes, managing air traffic. It's already there. Yes. Now, I think you have never thought about this field. I hope so. Linear programming is used in an area called military. Have you thought of it? Even during wars, we have to think about it. Whether which weapon I have to uh, use against my enemy. Yes, it's being used in different, maybe during the calamities and all the concepts are being used. But we are not having an idea. So the problem uh, the of selecting an air weapon system against the enemy. So that I'll have to uh, keep them pinned down and I have to concentrate on one more concept that is minimizing the amount of aviation gasoline that my uh, craft is using. Or something like I need to maximize the total uh, the amount of bombs that is dropped on a particular target. So this is being used in defense or military or different sectors. Another something, uh, another example is something like there is some uh, situation in which uh, I, I need to fight against a group of people. So I need to think on how many units of defense I need to send so that we'll be able to win or how many units of defense can be used in a given attack. 
But what I want is I want the protection at the lowest available cost or lowest possible cost. That is really important. So see the different criteria, how these criteria how these criteria are changing. Now, industry is something called energy industry. Have you thought of optimization or the concept of linear programming being used in energy industry? Now we know what's the uh, demand of energy, what's the uh, increasing need of energy, both maybe in our homes, in different, in everywhere, right? So even if we are putting upon some restrictions on energy usage, or even if you are uh, depending upon other sources, maybe something like the wind or maybe the solar. So here, to satisfy the fast growing energy demand of both the corporations and the society, it is inevitable to use the energy resources efficiently. And we have to have some low cost energy resources and in order to achieve the sustainability. As another part is another point is something like the cost of energy and the equipment have rise. So we need to have an effective management of these systems and it becomes an important subject to study. There the linear programming concept plays a role. So how we are having this growing importance of energy? We need to concentrate upon efficient use of resources. Now, the second one is how much value it adds to the economy at the macro level. Now, something like we are considering from environmental or the sustainable development perspective. So, we need to consider an issue or we need to consider a thing from different angles. So, similar to that of food and agriculture and the other industries, these are some of the problems that are studied in the energy management. So, the first one is increasing energy efficiency, avoiding the energy losses in the process. We are depending upon different alternative sources of energy. We are planning up different energy projects ahead. Then something like increasing the energy performance of cooperation and following up some of the governmental policies or the rules. Here also transportation optimization or that term comes into picture. The optimization part comes into picture. The method to optimize the electric power system design. Something like I have an electric load, so I'm going to match the electric load in the shortest total distance, where it's being generated and where is its demand, or where the demand is high. So the linear programming can be used to optimize load matching or to optimize the cost, and it's a very important or a valuable tool in the energy industry. Now I'm speaking related to the manufacturing sector. Manufacturing or the service industry is also focusing on the concept of linear programming on a day-to-day -day basis. I have listed up four important points out of it. The first one is analyzing supply chain operation. Second one is shelf space optimization. Third one is optimizing the delivery route. And the fourth one is machine learning. So this is something I think which we have already mentioned. Analyzing the supply chain operations, how it's going to happen. We all know about the storage outlet concept, right? We have already discussed this maybe just few minutes before. So here, the motive is to maximize the efficiency with minimum operation cost. So the manufacturer, maybe he can work on the different storage outlet. He can work on the workforce to reduce the issues that are happening. Now, moving on, another concept is something called shelf space optimization. Have you ever thought of linear programming in, uh, in, in a store that we are visiting? Something like Walmart or Dmart or Hypercity, something like Real Reliance or Big Bazaar. Have you ever thought of the optimization concept, the linear programming concept being used in these stores? Yes, I think I'm well. I'm, I'm waiting for your reply in the chat box. So have you ever thought of these concepts being uh, used in uh, something like hypermarkets or stores? Yes, it's being used in different stores and hypermarkets. So see the areas where it plays a very important role. So when a customer comes to a, a place to shop, what will be the aim? What will be my aim if I'm the owner of the shop? My or my objective is to make the customer happy or something like I want him to easy, uh, be ease in locating all the things that he needs. I want him to select the right product, right? That will be my aim. And the profit and all, that will be the ultimate 
So we are in a situation in which the number of products in the market have increased and that too in uh, it's uncountable. So it's very important for a person or for a uh, person who is having a shop to understand what is the need of my customer. As I'm having different shelf spaces, maybe something like, maybe I'll have a limited shelf space, maybe I'll have a long shelf space, maybe I'm having limited amount of resources, or maybe like I'm having variety of products, in number of products. How am I going to arrange these products in my shop? This is completely based on the concept of optimization. Products in the shop are placed strategically, keeping in mind the customer's shopping pattern. How to tempt a customer to buy a product yes jimmy that's obviously fine i would give you an example when when we are going to these stores with your, with your parents you have noticed that during the um, going towards the bill counter there will be some pans and all with some chocolates so these kids will already be with their parents and they, it's like they want this chocolate so it's, it's just added to the bills yes giving offers is another thing Keeping the product which is of more demand or which can get them more profits, that is another thing. So all these are different parts that has happened. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. Now, when it comes to optimizing the delivery route, we have seen this a lot. So here I would like to mention or mention some of the technical terms also. We have seen this as a single problem, right? So when it comes to service industry, it uses this concept of optimization to find the best route for multiple people across multiple cities. That's this whole network is working. And they are using different algorithms, something like clustering and greedy algorithm. The delivery companies, the Amazon or the FedEx, everyone is working based on these concepts and they are depending upon different algorithms also. Now, I hope you all have an idea about the concept of machine learning, right? The supervised learning concept that works on the basis of something called linear programming. Here, what the concept is, we have a system which is trying to fit into a particular model or maybe of a function. And I have an unknown test data. So after feeding the system with the input, I want it to predict the values of the output with the data which I'm feeding them or with the unknown test data to the system. So that's why it plays a role in the computer science also or in the machine learning part also. Now I would say every engineer, even a uh, mechanical engineer or even a computer science engineer, everybody is using the concept of linear programming to solve the design or the manufacturing pro problem. Are there any students who are really interested into something uh, related to the aerodynamic sh shape optimization or something called airfoil mesh? So in these aerodynamic shape optimization, something like to reduce the drag, or to reduce the drag coefficient in the airfoil, this concept is being used. So the linear programming the, provides engineers with an essential tool for the concept of optimization. Yes, somebody told you yeah, I'm interested in aeronautics. Yes, that's good. Now, I have some random areas which you have never thought of. Yes, we have seen something called investment. So in finance, linear programming plays a role in helping us to identify what's the budget, what's the asset allocation, how I should plan the financial thing. Now, another important part is something called portfolio selection. How Have you heard about something called portfolio selection? You need to find out when you're planning to invest, you need to find out which investment activity suits you. Or you have to find out the particular investment activity that is okay for you. So the portfolio selection helps you to find the allocation which maximizes the total expected return. And the risk has to be minimized. That's what we are mostly into things, right? Now, another one is called profit planning. How I'll be able to reach uh, or to maximize the profit margin from what all investment I have made. How I'll, I'll be able to reach this. That's another example. Now, I think marketing management. It's, it's, it's an area where this concept is very, very important or this concept plays a crucial role. I need to determine which news channel I have to give advertisement. That's something called the media selection. I have a budget. I have it towards different media selection. So here, linear programming technique plays a very important role in determining the advertisement media. 
I need to select the media which is having a maximum exposure. Or maximum people should visit that media. I, I'll have a budget also. So I need to consider these two factors before selecting it. Uh, something like analyzing the effectiveness of an advertising campaign. You have heard about the click, right? Uh, the, the rate per click and all those things uh, when it comes to different ads in the social media. About the marketing research and also about the marketing direction. Now I think we'll move on to the personal management. It's the only staff selection in every every industry. How we are going to manage your staff? How we are going to select your staff? How are we going to think about their salaries? How we are going to think about their incentives? So these are some of the advantages of the concept of linear programming. Yes, somebody have typed giving promotion on YouTube. Obviously, that's the the linear programming helps in attaining optimum utilization of the resources. So they help us to solve the complex problem. They help us in taking a quality or they improve our quality of decision making. It's more flexible. Helps us in the productive management of an organization to get better outcome. And the linear programming helps us to provide possible as well as practical solutions. I hope at least some of you have received or you have received an idea about the different applications that you've never thought about. Maybe some applications you thought it will be using. So these are the careers which use the linear equations. Linear equations or the linear programming is being used by business managers, by financial analysts, maybe computer programmers, research scientists, resource manager, even architect, builders, healthcare professionals, engineers of different sectors who is dealing with the nuclear part, biomedical part, chemical or electrical or mechanical part. So I hope uh, you have received an idea about the linear programming, about the different areas in which this concept is using. And I'm um, so sorry for the initial delay, the initial glitch that has happened. So thank you students for attending the session. I'm open to Q&A. So this is my mail ID and my number. So if you wish to discuss about anything which is related to this session or anything that we have covered in this session, you can directly contact me or you can just call me. So I think you can type the questions in the chat box. I am open for the Q&A. And I hope the session was useful and you have received some new idea. Uh, there was somebody who was asking, uh, yes, I hope this was useful also. I would say linear programming is there, in, there with aerospace people or the aeronautical people also. It's something like when um, it comes to the aircraft boarding strategy, maybe uh, the planning of these uh, airlines. So here also linear programming plays a very important role. And uh, I, I wish to discuss something more, just a final note. So you, we have studied linear programming, the basic concept, right? We know how to solve the problem. We know how to solve the problem using graph, using metrics. But we never thought of why this thing. So always try to have this attitude towards everything that you meet in your life. So why this? Always question things and always try. You're having resources, right? You have all information uh, with you. So always try to question towards these things and always try to read out more things. So when it comes to uh, the course called engineering, it's it's not these uh, marks which is going to give you an extra edge. How much you are informed about the things that's happening around us, uh, around us or around you, 
how much you are having a practical knowledge about the things around you gives you an extra edge when it comes to the course called engineering so even or till now you have never thought your uh, what are you encounter in that way start thinking in that way that is really important and give you an extra edge so i hope the session was useful and i hope we'll be able to meet tomorrow so we'll have a physics topic tomorrow it's electromagnetic waves and we have lot more interesting things tomorrow so thank you students for attending and i hope this was useful yes during the charting uh, and wicket uh, during the flight charting and uh, all those things optimization technical stuff yes so if there are any further queries i would just show my mail id and number once again if you have anything you can just mail me or even you can text me so thank you so much students for attending and i hope the session was useful thank you so much